Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we're going to be looking at a new Charizard card. It seems like Sun and Moon 9, what is going to be team up when it comes out over here, has started to leak properly. We looked at Eevee and Snorlax Tag Team GX yesterday, but that was revealed in a magazine, which is a little bit different. So I wasn't 100% sure it counted. But today, we have the new Charizard. So it looks like the set is starting to leak. And you know the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Every card that's revealed, you'll find it here. Shout out to the lovely 2 new one 2 2 3 for tweeting this out with a translation. And thank you to Austin J. Kuke, who did tag me in that tweet to make sure that I saw it. Lovely people. So Charizard then. We don't get many good Charizards. This looks like the best Charizard we've seen in quite some time. It's got 150 HP, which is honestly slightly lower than we'd expect. Back in the base Sun and Moon set, Dragonite was having 160. But 150 is still a large amount of HP and nothing to balk at. I think we can probably get over it. Retreat cost of two is kind of annoying, given that you cannot get free retreat with a skateboard, which is starting to see more and more play as we go through here. And the weakness to water as it stands at the moment is alright. We're not seeing many particularly good water decks flying around. I mean, yeah, Lapras sees a little bit of play here and there, and Quagsire as a whole is starting to make water decks more viable, but it's not like they're taking over the format yet. Being a fire type does mean you hit weakness against grass Pokemon like Golisopod and Decidueye, which is seeing a little bit more play lately. And your metal Pokemon like your Duskmane the Crozma. So actually, you're not being hit for a good weakness, but you are hitting a good weakness, which is quite nice. And you are a stage two, and being a stage two is a bit of a pain. But we have got Alola Ninetales now, which really helps you to get your stage twos out and about, because it allows you to search out your rare candy basically whenever you want it. So, which is really quite nice. So, I'm a fan of this, ladies and gentlemen. But as always, it's the attack and ability which is really going to determine how good this card is. The ability says, once during your turn, before you attack, you may put two damage counters on this Pokemon. If you do, search your deck for up to two fire energy cards and attach them to this Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. This is extremely similar to the Darkness Incineroar GX that puts three damage counters on and then searches your deck for free energy and attaches them. It's very much an equivalent kind of attack. And it's just consistency. It means you can get rolling. We'll get to the attack in a minute, but you can already see that the attack is for two fire energy. So you can already see that we're going to be using this quite nicely, just using the ability. This is phenomenal. This is, okay, fine, you've got to get the stage 2 out. But then as soon as you get the stage 2 out, you don't have to worry about the energy. And this is awesome, because are we going to see more Pokemon like this? I mean, I know Incineroar came out in Dark Order in Japan, but it's going to be coming out in Team Up over here. So just in that one Team Up set, we're going to be having two Stage 2 Pokemon that essentially have the ability, look, take some damage counters, but then search for as much energy as you need. Incineroar needs three, you take three damage counters and search for three. Charizard needs two, you take two damage counters and search for two. It's a way of making Stage 2s more viable, because it means, yes, you've got to get the Rare Candy into Stage 2. Yes, you've got to get Evolved Up. But once you get Evolved Up, you're ready to go. You've got the energy, and you don't need to worry about that in addition to it. Something like Decidueye's got an amazing ability, but if you actually want to attack with Decidueye, it takes a while to get rolling. Charizard, no such problem. And it's a non-GX evolve Pokemon. So Alola Muck ain't going to turn off your ability, and Glaceon ain't going to turn off your ability, and unless your opponent's got a slacking in the active, you ain't getting your ability turned off here. This is a safe ability, and I love it. And then we get to the attack, and the attack here, ladies and gentlemen, is also very nice indeed. 
What it does is 30 damage, but then you've got to discard all energy attached to it, all fire energy, and you do 50 more for each energy discarded. So if you just use the ability to put two energy on there, and then use the attack discarding two of them, you're doing 130. And 130 is one of the key numbers in the game at the moment. It's absolutely crucial. Because something like a non-GX Boswell will go down in a single hit to this. Something like a Shining Lugia will go down in one hit to this. Something like a Granbull will go down in one hit. Most of the good, relevant non-GXs, White Kyurem, there's another example, are going to be going down in one hit to this. At the moment, you really need to be doing 130 to non-GXs because there's so many relevant non-GXs that have 130. You can't use Choice Band. You can't use Shrine of Punishment. You need to just be hitting 130. And this does that beautifully. And then bearing in mind that's just using the ability. You've still got your attachment for the turn. And when you use that attachment for the turn, you've now got free energy on. You discard them plus the 30 base, you're up to 180. So all of a sudden you've got something like a Rayquaza going down in a single hit here. You add a Shrine of Punishment, you've got a Buzzwall going down because you're up to 190. And time you add a Choice Band on here, then you're actually up to 210. And everything up to and including Zoroark is going down in a single hit here. And all you're doing is using the ability and then attaching a single card from your hand. This is not like the most difficult thing to pull off ever. Yes, you've got to get the stage 2. But as soon as you get the stage 2, you're hitting 130, or if you've got an attachment from your hand, 180. If you've got a choice band, 210. And all of a sudden, you've got a non-GX Pokemon, which is essentially a single energy attacker, because you only need to have one energy from your hand, which is one hit KOing any non-GX. Okay, fine, Waylord, either of them will be able to survive. But other than that, even your big boys like Mamoswine and Regigigas will be going down in one hit if you can get an attachment from your hand here, which is just ridiculous. You're hitting a flat 180. And if you're worried, do it again next turn. Just get the energy back next turn. Okay, you're down to 130 HP, but as we've been talking about with stuff like Shining Lugia, 130 HP isn't that easy to hit for every Pokemon. You kind of need to stream stage twos, but actually you're hitting so much damage here so easily. I mean, you're basically hitting the numbers on a lot of Pokemon just with the ability, and then once you add an energy and a choice band, you're hitting the numbers on almost everything. And it even gets better than that because I didn't mention earlier that we've got Heat Factory Prism Star. Okay, it's only a once per game Prism Star, but you still get to discard a card from your hand and draw free a fire energy from your hand. That's going to help you set up. And while we're talking about Prism Stars, how about Victini Prism Star? Now, Victini Prism Star with this is Redonk. Two fire energy... Shuffle all your fire energy from your discard back into your deck. 20 damage for each energy you shuffled back. So now you've got another really powerful non-GX attacker. Charizard naturally is putting energy in a discard so that you can get this rolling. And then all the energy is in the discard so you can get cracking on this again. And... Let's not forget the Charmeleon from Dragon Majesty. Now, the Charizard from Dragon Majesty is not particularly great. It's interesting, but it's not seeing a lot of play, and I don't think it's going to. But Charmeleon, I told you to keep an eye on this, because if we ever get a really good Charizard, this is going to become ridiculously good. And now we have. The Charmeleon's ability says when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, discard the top five cards of your deck. If any of them have fire energy, attach them to this Pokemon. Yes, you risk discarding something like Victini, but get it out of your deck first. And yes, you risk discarding something like a Rare Candy. But if you discard a Charizard, that's fine. You can just use Rescue Stretcher. And if you're using Charmeleon, actually that makes you less reliant on Rare Candy. And now you've potentially got lots of energy on there, so you don't even need Charizard's ability. Although you've always got it there in the background. This is a phenomenal Pokemon. 
with the only downside that it's a stage two. The ability getting itself up and rolling is ridiculous. The fact that it hits 130 with just the ability, Shining Lugia, Buzzwall, 180 with another attachment from your hand, Rayquaza, etc., and 210 with a choice band, Zoroark, means that you are absolutely hitting the numbers. So we've got a Pokemon that gets itself rolling, that hits all the numbers, and then you can add in stuff like Charmeleon, which just makes it better. I'm giving this between four and five Wossies. We don't see half Wossies. That would be barbaric. And I genuinely think this is playable. I think we're actually going to see a Charizard deck. We haven't seen a Charizard deck for years. We haven't had a genuinely good Charizard in years. Charizard GX is fun, but it just wasn't that great. The Charizard from Evolutions was quite nice, but it never proved to be that great. The Charizard from Dragon Majesty has been proven to not be particularly playable. This actually looks like a playable Charizard. As soon as you get it out, you're getting one-hit KOs on basically everything. And you only ever need to really attach one energy from your hand, and half the time you don't even need to do that. And you're only giving up one prize. Ladies and gentlemen, I adore this. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wassy And Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio where you can do exactly that. And do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wassy Plays for some more Wassy action. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves. Until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.